Welcome everyone. We'll get started in a few minutes, but we're glad that you're here for the Smart Texas virtual user group. If that's what you're joining, we'll have a special make it take it. So we'll get started shortly. Welcome everyone to the Smart Texas Virtual User Group. This is Heather, and I know some people are just getting on, which is fine. We're not ready to start exactly yet, but I did send out an email to everyone that had registered previously, and the I um, Jeff Peterson is joining us, and we're excited. And he and I are going to be sharing a bunch of things. I sent an email out with this link. But if you would like to, if you haven't downloaded that link and extracted those files for the special make it and take it, here is the link. If you um, want to, it's a, it's a shorter link for a Dropbox folder. So if you will, um, if you want to join us, you can download that, those files and follow along with us. And we'll get started in a few seconds. But we are here for the make it and take it June session. I did post the um, resource link as well in the, uh, you should have received it as well. All right. So we are going to go ahead, I'm going to give it a few more minutes for this special format. Glad that you're here today. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask. So I'm going to go ahead, I believe, and get started. Just and I will. Um, I have a file with this on it, and I did send it out to everyone. This link. So I am Heather Lamb, and I'm glad you're joining us for this Make It and Take It. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. My I guess all my travel 
my voice is a little grumbly this morning. So normally, um, I guess I do it in the afternoon, so it, I noticed that it was a little grumbly. So I'm, I'm excited that everyone is here. It's summer, and glad that you're spending a little bit of your summer with us. We will, this is a repeat sec session, so we'll do the other, the repeat this afternoon, but trying to, with everyone accommodating their schedules, hopefully this, this will be kind of a different um, format. So just so you know who I am and, and what, and we've added a couple of new things. So we've all we've had our Smart Texas Twitter um, where you can follow us. I'm on Twitter, Sandy Hill, our ESS, and Luis Morales, ESS. They're both on Twitter. We post a lot of things. We're on Facebook, um, and we're on Facebook, and we are Smart Texas on Facebook. I did discover that even if you're not on Facebook, you can go and lurk um, on the out on that site. So I post a bunch of stuff. So even if you choose not to be on Facebook, that's okay. You can still see what we're doing by checking that out. And recently, I've always had a Pinterest, or not always, but for a while I've had a Pinterest um, board. and I have lots of friends on it and decided that maybe I just needed to have a Smart Texas. Not that I didn't mind people repinning and following me and all of that on my personal one, um, but I made a Smart Texas Pinterest and I started posting some things out there and I'll sh show an example of something. It's pretty it's pretty neat because, you know, it's it's just like your bulletin board. If you're not familiar with Pinterest, it's, it's just a quick and easy way to ha create some boards without doing favorites and, and stuff. So, pretty excited about that. And as always, I will be sharing all these resources on our web. I'm going to, that's one of my tasks between today and tomorrow to update my website. So how can you participate? Well, this is a, this is a little bit different um, format. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can participate. One of them, you can just follow along. Um, we do have the question panel. You can raise your hand if you have a question, and I encourage you to raise your hand. I'll keep watching this, and I've asked Jeff to join and to help watching to watch if you have a question so that we can make this really interactive, because we are going to focus a lot on Notebook 11, and Jeff's got some exciting, cool things that he's, he's really going to share some neato things. And then it is recorded, the session. I do have the session being recorded. Um, we do, this is kind of what we're going to be talking about. We are going to, and I'll let Jeff introduce himself in just a second, but um, we'll, um, we'll have our little introductions, how the format works, I'll talk about that. Some of the things that we're going to cover today are, I just want to remind you about the training in PD resources because with Notebook 11, I think this is that's going to be really crucial um, to helping with your successes and, and stuff with, especially with some of the features like Smart Inc and how does that work and it's new. I'm going to share a few tips and tricks of things that I've learned along the way so far and then Jeff will be here. Then I'm going to come back and show you some ideas with tables and cameras and we're going to have a little practice time with that. And then I want to think about interactivity for teaching and learning just as you're creating lessons and just some key considerations to think about and then a couple more resources that Pinterest page and stuff and then our next session so that's what we're going to cover and because of all this cool stuff I decided if, since it's summer um, that we'd make it a little bit longer so we're not so rushed and you'd have a little bit of time to actually ask those questions so please use that raise your hand feature um, and and if you have questions we do have our today's meet going on so I put this in our internet browser and and Jeff is um, already on there, but it's todaysmeet.com and then stvug, and so, and I probably, I could probably um, put that in the chat box as well, but I like that feature, as I have explained previously, that, um, that it, GoToWebinar is a great, um, I think a great platform for this type of format, but we can't always see, I can see the questions, Jeff can see the questions, but that, and that chat, you, it's a one-sided chat. So this allows you to, 
to chat and to see what's going on. So pretty excited. Um, I like, and this is that cool internet browser that, so I didn't even have to click on that link. It took me straight there. And Jeff's going to talk a little bit more about that. So if you haven't used today's Meet before, it's just a great way to get a back channel conversation going and some, you know, some some cool stuff, people interacting virtually. So that's that's there as well. So that's one way to participate. And then, as I said, those resources, if you, the, there, it's, a, it's a zip file because of Dropbox to do this. If for some reason you can't get it, let me know and I can um, see if I can do it a different way. But hopefully you're able to find that. I, I've checked it a few times on a different computer actually. Um, and then, so a couple of ways that you can do this is if you minimize or, you know, have two different windows up and down so you can watch something and then Jeff and I will pause to give you some time. I've done this format in when I do the smart table virtual webinars and it seems to work pretty good. So you can follow along, we'll have some pause time, but you can also watch and then practice later. So I will post the resources to my virtual, my digital dashboard, but hopefully this this format will you'll find kind of attractive in in those you know learning some new tips and tricks. I am running on a Windows computer because up until recently I couldn't record on the Mac but the go to webinar so I might have a Mac special um, session. So I know we've got some Mac users out there. All right. So with that, and you, this file is different than the file that you have. So just, I just want to make sure that you're not looking for this in that other file. So I've just got some added stuff. Let's see. Um, oh, <laughs> Lisa says, I love the Mac session. Yeah, I thought you would. So I might do that so that we can, you know, specifically target some Mac things. So I wanted to show you a couple of things first of all about um, the training and, and PD. So, and then I'm going to ask a question so I can kind of find out who you are and stuff. So we're going to a little change the format of up a little bit. But one of the things that there's so many pieces of, of things out on the training and um, PD site. So I wanted to just kind of show you what what, when you go to the training and professional development site, I just have it linked here, there's a lot of different places that you can go and what I want to do is I want you to, to see, you know, kind of some ideas on how to, how to help you um, better use this resource. So the first thing that I want to show you is this smart learning, whoopsie, let's see. So the smart learning space. So I'm going to try this again. So if I if I come over here to the smart learning space, what the smart learning space is, you can learn about it. And what it is 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 it's a virtual learning environment, is what it says. So the virtual learning environment, basically, where you'll have some online, some blended learning sessions, things like that. You can log in and increase your level. What's a really nice feature of this is when after you do these these learnings or these use these resources, they're certificates. So if you need to show proof that you did some of these things, this is a great tool for that. So so you can you can go here to find out more and it it there's online stuff, there's face to face things you can find out if you want to know more about getting someone to come or where at the sessions that are happening. There's some self paced things. So that's that's one place. That's the smart learning space. Then over here, and I think I'm going to open up my floating tools here so I can highlight a little bit. So, and over here, let's see, let me see if I have smart ink. Yep, I have smart ink turned on. So over here, what I might do is look at, so I'm using smart ink. Smart ink is the new, um, tool that loads with your software instead of having the ink layer, what's nice is I can move things around on my website. And I'm going to show you some resources for this. So I want to know more about, you know, smart notebook in general. So I might go to this to, to here. So let me, I'm going to click on that smart notebook collaborative learning. And if you just want to watch right now, that's, that's fine. Um, so it's going to go out to that. So everything about smart notebook. And here's the tricky thing. 
So here's the tricky thing that there's there's a ton of there's a ton of things that show up here public private you know all kinds of stuff and I want to make you aware of this right at the top so let me move my toolbar down right at the top right here it says fine tune your results so if you say oh I only want I only want to to see um, this. I only want to see, say, whoopsie, let me go back. I'm having a little trouble. I'm using my, not my, my slate, I'm using my podium. So I only want to see things about Smart Ink. And so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is click off of all products. And then I'm going to go just to Smart Ink. And I only want Smart Ink. And then maybe I only want um, the free resources. Maybe I only want, I'm going to get rid of my little ink right here. Because you can see how you can now write and scroll. That's with Smart Ink. Maybe I only want education. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to refine my results. So you can see that after I refine them, I only have one thing about Smart Ink. So I don't have I don't have all the extra list of things. So this is a really nice way to refine and really cull down what are you truly looking for. So here is a video. Smart Ink is a great tool because you notice that you can write on websites, you can write on PDFs, you can write on Word documents, use PowerPoint. So there's videos that show you how it all works, how do you use it, and so, you know, without being connected to a, a smart board, you have to be connected to a smart board to actually use it, but if you want to see how it works and then if you have access to a smart board to practice, you might want to, or you can um, wait until you get back to at, in August to learn more about it. So that's one thing to really consider. You'll see when you download the software you get this little Smart Ink toolbar and you can turn it on and there's got some features with it. But to really, I think, embrace it, understand it, I think these videos you'll find will truly help you. So I just went up to the fine tune and you could do the same thing. If you want to know more about Smart Response, if you want to know more about Smart Notebook, but you want to have the live online or the self pace, you can really filter down and see, you know, what there is out there. So that's what I really wanted to say about Smart Training. Whoopsie. That's not what you want to see. So that's that's what I want to say about you know kind of um, the training of PD. I also this is a link to our Ed Compass blog. There's a whole article about some of the things about training in PD. All right, so I'm going to try to do this. So this is um, VE. So I'm going to ask a few questions because I want you to have a little time to to ask a few questions about Notebook 11. So I'm going to just start off with a quick VE question. So I'm going to um, I'm going to start this. And you know VE is a virtual clicker. So if you're on your computer and you don't want to switch windows, you could actually use your phone. Um, the way that VE works is I have my computer set up and it's I'm having it set up and I want to um, get, let's see, Oh, no, I don't. I want, oh, there we go. I was waiting for it to populate. So you need to go to this website, response.smarttech.com. So if I come down and I want to go down to that, web, to that website, and I want you to, to when you go into response.smarttech.com, I want you to um, put this number in under the assessment ID, not the students, and you'll see that in response VE, I put the questions in this, so the questions will actually, and the pictures, will populate. All right, so let me, I'm going to have to, so there's, I think, something with GoToWebinar. It um, kind of makes me lose my, um, my um, icon. So I'm going to, when I start this, so that's what you will need to do. And here's the number right here as well. So the first question that I ask is, have you downloaded Smart Notebook 11? And so what I can do is I can see that I have four people logged in. And if I do it, show a results preview. So all you want to do is, 
if you go to response.smarttech.com on your device and and then you can so let me see if I can come up here and let me open it up a new window um, so if I go to so you can see this or on your phone or any web enabled device so if I go to response.smarttech.com here's where you'll you'll see that icon and let me go in here and that number is 351692 so just trying to you know vary the way that we're doing stuff so three five one six nine two I'm going to sign in and see how cool that is my question my picture populates up and it'll populate on your device so kind of neat so if you think about this and one of the ways I actually have been explaining is let's say you go to the zoo or you go to a field trip and you your group leader has a a web enabled device think about how you could start a quiz before you left school you go on the field trip the kids in their group answer the questions when they come to the say the Monet painting or the something by an artist or if you're the zoo you go to the zoo maybe you have a text question so you could type and then when the teacher gets back at the end of the day they stop it and then they have the authentic data so I have so I'm going to click on yes and I'm going to arrow over and then this one is if you downloaded Notebook 11, what's your favorite new feature? So I really like the internet browser for some quick. And I'm going to click on this. And then when I submit it, it's going to say wait. And then what I can see on the teacher side of things is I can see that my results. So if I keep going, all students have answered. So let's go to the, so 100%. Oh, yay! 100% of you have downloaded Notebook 11. So on this one, so we've got a bunch of results. So let's go down here and let's show my, so we've got Activity Builder, we have audio, we have Internet Browser, Internet Web, haven't played with it, unanswered. So that's okay. But you know what? I get some really quick feedback. So that's what I love about it. So we're really pushing that whole formative assessment versus the summative. We all know in Texas about our summatives. But with this, now I'll throw something out that's kind of nifty is um, we have something that we've just created and it's coming out in beta. And so if you are an Edgeforia Aware user, we will have a connector that works with Edgeforia Aware. Right now we can do some things with exam view to get tests in there, to make test banks, but we're going to have that and um, a feature so pretty exciting about that um, are pretty excited so that's that's just a really quick and easy way if I'm I that's my last question so I'm going to stop it and then I can populate my data and see what it's about so if I wanted to talk more I can talk about this and I can show my details and I can see who's done it I can show my legend and I can even insert that into my notebook file so here's this and if I come down here here is my answers right there so that's pretty nifty, I think. And it's instantaneously, and the best part is it uses things that we already have. I use, I use my computer. You, could, you might have used your iPad or your iPhone or your BlackBerry or some other web-enabled device. So pretty neat. I like that um, to know more about that. So, um, you know, to, to really get uh, some instant feedback. And you know, if you didn't have VE, if you've got just regular response, you could do the same thing. You would just type in your answer. Um, PE has a limit of characters of, I believe, 20. XE has 140. So we're Franz, who's been on our session before, she'll do something called, um, tell me what you know about. She has XE clickers. And she'll say, in 140 characters or less, tell me what you know about, and they have to tell her. And she can really identify um, really misinformation or reteaching opportunities. So really neat idea. All right, so let's talk about some notebook tips and tricks. So here's a cool thing. Someone emailed and said, Heather, is there a way to change a pen or my pens in my pen tray to always be calligraphic. So I didn't know the answer. I was going to give her this long, drawn-out way. Well, now you'll have to do this when you're connected to your board, 
um, or your slate or some device. But if you go down and if you're on the Mac, if it's in your dock, it's your smart tools. But if you go down to your smart tools icon and go to your smart, um, if you go to your smart settings, So let's see if that's going to, oh, it's a little, there we go. So smart settings, and if I, I'm on a podium right now. So right here on this very front page, you see the button right there that says use calligraphic ink? That means every time I pick up any of these pens, it will be that calligraphic ink. And if you've noticed, if you've used a calligraphic ink, it's very smooth and the writing is nice. So that way you don't have to do anything else but apply it. Now when I write with those pens, they'll be calligraphic. You can customize these pens. If you've ever not known that, you can customize if you wanted that black pen to be something, a highlighter or something, you just might identify it because if you have somebody coming in and picks up that pen and that's not the expected behavior of that pen, you can change the size of your eraser. So this is where you do that. If you've ever wanted to know um, how to change, instead of having four point of orientation, you want nine point or even 20 point, here's where you change your orientation points right here. So that's that. So there's a few other things in here, but that's, that's where you change some of those things. You have to be connected to your, your device to be able to do this. And then I'll apply it, and then now I've got those pens set up. So that's a cool thing. The other thing is sometimes when you find lessons and you are creating lessons, you see this, but every, everybody's computer is way different. So I'm using a widescreen um, computer, um, but when I go to a, um, a 4 by 3 ratio or different sizes um, of computers, you know, it affects the way that your screen sometimes looks or your resolution is different, different things like that. So one thing, there's an assumption that maybe you're presenting in full screen when you do this, but this is kind of nice. If I go up to the view menu, one of the new things in Notebook 11 is this full screen border. And so you can go, and if you say, oh, I'm on a full 4 by 3 device. So if I put that here, well, let me put it on my, so I'm using the device that I have. So I'm on a, I think it's 16 by 10. See what it did? It made that line right there. So when I go into, if I move anything below that line, if I go into full screen, watch what happens. So see, oh, actually, I think I'm on a 16 by 9 computer because it, it's still showing. So let me go back. You have to know which you're that would help. So, sorry. Um, let me change that and show you. So if I go 60 by 9, now I think that's right. So if I go into full screen, now, see, oh, maybe I am on. I, I think I changed my resolution because I'm on my, I, I'm on that post. Sorry. It worked a minute ago, but you can see that it gives you kind of some hints on how far, because what you'll find is lessons. People drag lessons way down, and they start having long and skinny pages. So if I go out of full screen, do you see the long and skinny pages, and I get the gray border? So it's kind of an identifier for you. So let me go back to here and see what happens. Well, that might be better, 4 by 3 because I'm on my podium, and that's, so I'm associating a, wet, a widescreen computer to a 4 by 3 so maybe it's by the delay. So to turn that on and off, you go right here under View, and I'm, I'll check on this for the Mac people, but I think that it's, um, I believe it's the same thing. I'll have to check to sh make sure, so don't show that. And then I'm back. So let's see. Oh, so Lisa asked a great question. Yes, you do have to be connected to the board to see Smart Inc. So that's a great question. You have to be connected to your board or slate to have to see Smart Inc. So thanks for reminding me on that, Lisa. So yes, you won't see the icons if you're not connected. So if I disconnected my podium, I would not see that. So great question. Oh, and then she said the border things under format on the Mac. <laughs> I wish I could have two screens on my computer um, doing that. All right. And then the other thing is um, that we have is adding tools to your toolbar. So I got the opportunity to, to work or to go and help with a, a 
lesson developer workshop. So I just got to be an audience member and I supported the district with this. So it was kind of nice because I learned a few tips and tricks. So you know that you have your little um, customize the toolbar icon right here. So what you can do on here is when you customize, when I click on that, that's how I get my customized. Now, for some reason, you don't see that. Some of Windows 7 computers, I lost mine because I changed the di my personalized my display, and so you have to keep it at a, a certain the default. So, so, so just that's a tip. So if you custom, if you personalize your display, that might go away. So don't don't keep it at the default that that Windows 7 says. Um, Notice that these are actions, and so now they've changed the toolbar, and these are tools. So let's say I don't have a smart document camera. Smart document cameras are pretty nifty because I just have seamlessness, but I don't have a smart document camera. So if you have an Elmo or you have a um, Lumens or you have um, Ladybugs or something like that, that button's not going to work with with our um, software. So that button, I'm going to take that button away by just dragging it out. But you know what? There's a really cool reset the page icon. Maybe I want to replace that with that button. I can do that. And then you know what? I like the, I'm going to be using this clear ink a lot because we're going to be doing something with clear ink. So clear ink will clear if you have writing on the page instead of erasing or resetting your page, you can clear the ink off of it and it doesn't clear your objects. Well watch this. So this is neat. So you can add something into that little into the space, but maybe I want that button to be really big because I want my kids to see it. Do you see what's happening where I have in between how that the line, so if I drop it here, I get a really big button. So I didn't know that um, until I just was dropping stuff anywhere and wondered how I got big buttons and small buttons. So now I knew. Now if I decide, oh, I need to go back all the way to the where it started, I can restop, reset my toolbar, and I can also reset my default properties, and then it'll, ta it'll take me all back to um, or my original. So that's that's new with the software as well. So um, so that's a cool thing to be doing with adding small and large icons. So that you might consider adding and customizing your toolbar to meet your needs. There might be some tools that you use all the time. Put them up there. We also have with this software, they are exploring. We've always had our gallery over here. So we've always had the gallery, but now what happens is in, we have gallery collections and things that are on the Smart Exchange that you have to go to the Smart Exchange and it's, you know, multiple steps. So what Smart is doing is, um, let me, I think I have a page here. Um, right here. So it there. what they've done is there's a little icon right here, the Smart Notebook Beta. Mine, I've already, I've already downloaded the beta and I can tell that, but there's feedback here that they want. So they're trying to gather, it, gather an easy way for you to, to, oopsie, huh, they're trying to, well it should have, it should have showed um, questions, but hmm. Well, interesting, because that was up there earlier, because um, I checked on it. But maybe they're adding something to it, so they're, they took it down. But there is a way for you to, to click on that icon and add this little gallery icon. What this does is it instantly, you see, it goes out to the Smart Exchange, so you have to be on the web to, to see all this stuff. But what it's going to do is instantly, if you're searching for say frogs and I've done this when I do a search just in my regular gallery I'm only going to find I don't know five or six things but when I search out it's going to go out to the gallery and I searched and it says looking for notebook files click here there's seven pages of stuff maybe I want only flash items maybe I want to limit my search by something. So that's how I limit it. This is all in beta right now. So if there's something you think could be helped or perfected on this, this is by this is your opportunity to sub submit some feedback. So that's you can add that little icon here. That's what I have is that beta icon and then I always, I have my my content. 
and so these are my things that I have in my content and then under tools you can show you know it, there's some, gonna be some interfaces that are here but right now it, it's um, the link is not working so that's always a good thing all right so let's go I'm gonna skip back here um, and then finally, I had those two pages out of order. I just wanted to remind you about this feature because um, I've had some questions, some people asking me. They're trying to do this just on their computer. And you ha this is, once again, something that you have to be connected to your, your um, interactive whiteboard. Or it does work on a slate. But you do have to be connected to a device of something, a product, to get this. But that shaking group, and, and I think... Um, Jeff is going to talk a little bit about some ideas, but you remember that when you do this, so let's see if I can be over here, and what I would do is highlight, and when I highlight with my finger on my board, if I sh just drag my finger back and forth, it shakes in groups, and then drag it back and forth, it ungroups. Now, I will tell you that in the past couple of days, um, I've noticed that if I've had stuff grouped, I should have probably locked stuff because when I've locked it, or when I've not had things locked but they've been grouped, I've inadvertently ungrouped them really fast. So um, what I would probably do is if I have this and I group it um, with that, I would probably lock it or maybe I have something ungrouped. So just know that I've had a couple of times when I just was I just had to regroup something pretty fast, but inadvertently I've um, grouped un or ungrouped things, not meaning to ungroup them. So if it's something that you truly want to shake and ungroup, then you can don't have to lock it. But if it's a content page, you might lock that page um, or lock that icon. So basically, if I wanted this not to, I'm going to lock that in place. So that way, if I do try to shake and group with that, it's not going to do it. So this, even if I did this and I had this on my page and I lock it in place, I won't be able to do anything with it. But I notice that um, I'm not, I don't lock everything in place all the time, so I'm going to have to be a little more cognizant on that um, so that I don't ungroup things inadvertently. All right, so let's see, hopefully that's helped you a little bit to know some tips, a little bit, a few few tips and things going on. I'm just going to check out the today's meet. I know Jeff has been doing um, some things. So look at that. Oh, yay for the edge of Foria. Yep. Oh, Jeff typed. Good job. See, I asked. That's why I get hit somebody to help me because I can focus in on stuff, but I'm going back and forth and stuff. So thanks, Jeff, for supporting that. Make sure that, you know, this will stay live for, I think I put it for a month. So if you have questions or you want to go back and then I'll post some. What I might do is even take, I figured out how to take, there's a transcript. So even put that on the website as well. So with that, what I'm going to do, I'm glad we have quite a few people, seven of you joining us today, so I'm excited. I knew it was going to be a smaller group because, you know, it's summer and, you know, but we have some, a more group in the afternoon, so it really equals out to about the same. So pretty excited that you're joining us. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Jeff, and Jeff is going to, um, he's going to talk about, uh, he's got a lot of stuff, so what, he'll probably tell you this again t as well, but he, there, in the resources, there's a file that he's going to be using that you can't, it's his make and take file, so let me turn it over, so I'm going to make Jeff the presenter, and I'm going to unmute him. All right, and I will be asked answering questions. Are you there? Oh, there he is. Let's see. Oops, wait, let's see. Oh, there you are. You're unmuted now. Uh, uh, Heather muted me. She's trying to get rid of me already. <laughs> I, um, I've got, I've got, Heather did mention I do have several things on here that I'm going to go through. Hopefully you've downloaded the, uh, downloaded the make and take files that Heather has shared out with you. If, if not, that's okay. That's not a problem. Um, I'll go through several features. Uh, the file is set up so that it gives you an opportunity to play with it as we go through. 
Um, several things are just some great little great little items, most of which are built around the Notebook 11. Um, but there are some, I just absolutely love the new features that Heather asked that very tricky question of what's your favorite feature? Well, she didn't have an all the above answer. I guess I could have answered it that way. The, the, the new features have definitely improved the smart notebook. All right, so I will start out advancing myself to the next page. This was a neat little feature called the custom creative pen. I, I always loved the creative pen before, but it was limited. You had, you had your seven or eight items. That was your entire creative pen. Now we have the capability of creating your own custom creative pen. So I can use whatever object I want as a pen. This definitely is nice. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of schools, a lot of teachers I work with, one of their favorite things to do is to take their school mascots. They'll get, they'll get a little, lo the school mascot logo. They'll make that a creative pen for their students. And, and the students definitely respond to it. Um, to create a, create a custom creative pen, very simple, straightforward steps. I actually put them on the screen for you. Um, we just simply come in, select our pen tool, then I need to select my creative pen. Once I've selected my creative pen, I've got my standard eight creative pen options here. What I generally recommend to people is to select one of the pen tools that you don't ever use or you may only use once in a while. So in a situation like this, I, I'm not going to use this creative pen, which is a pretty pen, by the way, but I'm not going to use a snowflake pen. So I'm going to customize this one to meet one of my logos that I've put on the screen already. I've selected this pen, go to the Properties tab. Under the Properties tab, it's going to come up and it's going to ask us about a pattern. In this case, I want a new object, so I'm going to select an object I've currently got on the screen. It does allow you to browse to a picture, so if you've got a picture file saved on the computer, you can click Browse and browse to it pretty quick. I'm going to select an object. When I select an object, I get the little ink dropper with a box marquee around it, and I choose whichever object I want. I'm going to use the turtle. So when I select the turtle, you'll now see my object has changed over here on the side. When I hit Save Tool Properties, this will permanently change my creative pen that I had selected. So I can keep it permanent up here if I choose to. If I did not save the tool properties, it would only allow me to use the pen until I, that creative pen until I switched off. So now when I use the creative pen, I now have my turtle. It's a very simple, a very simple little task, but it definitely adds some great, a great creativity to what you're designing, how you're putting things together. Uh, <clears throat> if you're hopefully you're playing along with this as we've gone through, I did provide four different objects that you could build off of if you wanted. You may have your own images in mind. Uh, what I did do at the very bottom of the page, I've got this I've got this link on here, gettyicons.com. This is where I downloaded these four icons that I have at the top of the page. The, uh, this website provides a lot of free little icon type pictures, these kind of pictures. They provide them free for use. Um, there are some of them you do have to be, you do have to read their terms of service when you, uh, because these are uploaded by different people. Uh, some of them are free to do anything and everything you want with them. Some of them do have some limitations. They'll say they're free for like for your day-to-day -day use, but you can't go and post it on a billboard for commercial purposes. Um, some of them just say, hey, no old part, go to town, you can do with it what, what you want. So I do watch the terms of service, and these four icons happen to be ones that said, you are free to use them. I can't, I can't market them as my own, but I'm free to use them. Hey, Jeff, will you... Um, do those steps how you how you did the select the object and move the icon onto the object again? Will you model that again? Absolutely. I will reset. I will start myself all the way back at the beginning. All right. So I the first option was to select our pens. Once I've selected the pens, I do have to select my creative pen. 
under my creative pen I can select whichever pen I happen to choose so in this case I'm going to select this pen from there I need to go to my properties tab once the property tab is opened up down below there's an option a link that says select object I click on select object my cursor and uh, my mouse cursor changes to this little ink dropper with a square marquee around it all I need to do now is find the object that I want so I'll do I'll do the butterfly this time click on that object it instantly changes my tool so now my creative pen is the new object I selected if I click on save tool properties Save Tool Properties will permanently add it to my Creative Pen toolbar unless I reset it. In this case, I only want to use it short term, so now I have that butterfly short term. When I turn off this pen, it will reset back to its default because I didn't save. But I did. Very, a, very, a very neat little process. It definitely adds creativity to it and gives the teachers a lot of options on what they want it to do. So I'm, Lisa's asking a question, and I'm not on my Mac, so she's asked about that. Select object isn't, um, it's not allowing. So what I might do is I might check to see. I'll get off um, and get on my Mac later on. So for the Mac people, I'll check and see. Um, what the differences are, but um, I'm not on there right now. So um, those are the steps on the Windows, and I was assuming that it was the same on the Mac, but I will, I'll check that out, and what I might do is adapt my overview file, or maybe we can add that as a um, just extra pages before we post the files. So, because I was assuming it was the same on the Mac and the Windows. Um, I'm guilty of that, too. I was assuming the same thing. Yeah, so I'll, Lisa and anybody else that has a Mac, I'll check on that and let you know. Um, it, the select object is one way to do it, but do you, Jeff, do you, can you show how to browse for a picture um, quickly and that way maybe they can try that? Absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to think about have a picture, but I'm Well, sorry. you could go to your My Pictures and just use those, could you? Yes, I, I've got something somewhere. Okay. All right, um, so to select a picture, again, same steps getting to our creative pen. And instead of select object, I'm going to browse. It's going to pop up giving us access to our various pictures. And I have, it takes us pro probably to my documents. Uh, I have absolutely no clue just, what all is in here. Yeah. Work. Okay. <laughs> it it just... is a picture of my son, I can tell you that. Oh. <laughs> Well, and, and so that's interesting because um, it, so it doesn't show up as a link, I see, um, she, in, and somebody else that has a Mac said it was working, so it just doesn't show up as a link. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so it's working, but this is a different way, so this will be good to see how you can add a picture even off your, off your files. All right. Yes, and one thing I did experience with it, because it sounded like Lisa said she was not able to select the objects, mm -hmm. um, with the, when I was beta testing Notebook 11, the beta version would not let me select objects. Huh, interesting. But when I, when I updated to the, when the release version came out, then I was able to select. Okay. I was always able to browse, but select objects didn't work for me on the beta version. Okay, okay. Maybe just, maybe a bug in the software. I don't know. I think she's the, the the button is not a link. I think there's a select button. It's just not a link in the same respect. So I'll oh, look okay. at it too, and maybe we'll I'll take some screenshots of, and that way we can get some currency on, you know, what it looks like on the Mac and the Windows. So thanks for that. Always want to try to um, help both platforms. Um, the other th I was I posted on today's meet. Um, I think would be kind of cool to do this, especially like for example with Jeff and his son there. Let's say you had your kids' picture, your students' pictures up there, and you know somehow you told them, and you made um, little like you had little um, icons, and you quickly made a a link of of things of pictures. You might be able to use those as you know if you have a table that you're filling out or a chart. 
So, um, you know, I'm amazed sometimes what kids could do, and sometimes kids can figure this out on their own. But the thing I also found out is, you know, these, these can go bigger and smaller, but they only can go bigger as big as the line style. So if you try to stretch them, the image becomes very pixelated. So it's not meant to be a stretch tool. It's meant to be a, yeah, and he's demonstrating. It's meant to be like a stamp or something. So you can erase these, so that's good. So you can erase them, but you can't, you just can't um, really stretch them too much. So very, very cool. Love, love that. I can't wait to see how people are going to think about using that, um, that tool. All right. Very nice. And he's got all the steps, so with the steps I love, he's got all your steps there. And what we'll maybe do is come back and say, this is Windows, here's what it looks like on the Mac. So, cool. All Does right. that mean I should get a Mac? I, I don't know. No, no, you don't have to get a Mac. <laughs> I'm, I have a Mac, but yes, I'm getting a new Mac, though, for myself. <laughs> ah. Yes. Um, all right, moving on. That was exciting. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Create a pen is a very, new, very nice tool. All right, moving into the next tool, the fading ink. Um, we are familiar with Magic Ink. If you've worked with a smart notebook, you're already familiar with the, ma the Magic Ink, the Magic Pen. I come in, I write something after five, uh, five, ten seconds, depending on the timing of it. It disappears from your screen. Magic Ink was uh, Magic Ink is an absolutely great thing. The teachers I worked with, they absolutely loved it. Uh, one of our favorite things comments to it was uh, with Magic Ink was to call it the um, pay attention pen <laughs> because the kids aren't paying attention we just start writing our notes with the Magic Pen and they disappear on and of course the kids panic then because I didn't get the notes well should have been paying attention it only takes a couple of notes and the kids really start paying attention pretty quick with that the but the Magic Pen had some obstacles one being when you drew a circle Apparently, I interpreted that as a square. Let's try that again. I would try to draw an O on the screen. Anytime I drew an O or a zero, it would end up doing the spotlight feature. That kind of that kind of got annoying when you're trying to write basic note, just basic words up there, and you have an O in there, and it suddenly does a spotlight on you. I had to purposely make my O's as sloppy as could be, just so it wouldn't recognize it. A great feature that's been added in to the basic standard pen was the, what's called fading ink. I can now turn any of my basic pens into a fading ink pen. Now the first recommendation I do make with people is the when you click on the pen tool, I've got four of my four standard pens that correlate with the smart board itself. I don't like to change those. I, that's just my personal personal view, I like to leave those as is. I like to customize my additional pens. I have pens down here like these dotted, the dotted lines. I don't ever do anything with these outside of using them in demonstration because I don't personally have a need for a purple dashed line. So I'm going to customize this, this purple dashed line into a personalized pen for my needs that has fading ink similar to the Magic Pen. So I'm going to select this pen. From here, I'm going to come over once again to the Properties tab. Under the Properties tab, I need to go to. I can adjust anything here I need to. If I wanted to change my line style, I want this one to be a solid, and I'm good with a purple color. But under Fill Effects, I now have an option in here called Enable Ink to Fade After You Write With It. This is our fading ink. I'm going to check this. And I have the option to adjust the time. How fast is my ink going to disappear? With the Magic Pen, you know it disappears after the, the timing currently is set at six seconds. Then we now, with Notebook 11, have some control on that. Prior to that, it disappeared when it disappeared, and you had no control. Now we can delay how long it takes for it to disappear. Magic Ink works the same way. It has the same delay feature. But now with fading ink, I can come in and say, okay, I want it to disappear after 8 seconds or 10 seconds. Set my, set my settings. When I save the tool properties, this, just like the Create a Pen, is going to change this pen on my toolbar. 
So every time I select this pen, it now has the six second fading ink option. So I can write on the screen, six seconds later it will fade. When I close notebook, open it back up, this is a tool that I have now set on my toolbar. So anytime I need it, I have quick access. I don't have to rely on the magic pen. I've still got my other pens. But what's nice is now when I come in here and do my nice little O's, I don't get a spotlight anymore. I get an O versus the magic pen, which always gave me the spotlight. I absolutely love this feature because I can now customize as many pens as I want. If I wanted to, I could come in and customize the rest of these to all have fading ink on them. And it works to my advantage. There may be a situation where I've got standard, standard ink on the page, but I just need to add something real quick for the students to notice. I don't want it to stay on the page because I, want, I don't want to damage my original notes. Makes it quick and easy. I've added my own toolbar buttons. I can add as many as I want. All of them can have fading ink. I can set them to different transition times. I could have pen over here. Uh, Pen number one to disappear after six seconds. Pen number two to disappear after 12 seconds. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the, it definitely is a big improvement. I know that I've heard from teachers countless times they wanted to be able to adjust the timing of it. They have given us now that option to adjust the time. All right. So I'm going to go through those steps one time real quick. One more, uh, one cool. more time. Cool. Cool. Uh, so once again, I'm, I select the pen tool. I can select any one of the pens from here. doesn't matter which one. I'm, since I did my purple one, I'll do my black one now. I, in this case, I don't want the dashed line, so I'm going to come back to my line style and change my line style to, some, to a solid line. And let's do something really funkadelic. I'm really good at finding bad colors. But I'll, do, I'll, go with a, I'll go with a standard green. All right, I've got my colors chosen. I'm going to come to Fill Effects, enable the ink to fade, and then adjust my time. I want this one to disappear a little bit faster, so I'm going to set it for four seconds. When I save my tool properties, once again, it becomes a permanent part of this toolbar unless I reset everything. If I don't reset it, it just works for this one-time use if I don't save it. So I'm going to save it. Now I've got this pen as a permanent four-second green disappearing pen. A very, a very simple transition process, very simple process to put together. And once again, it, because the notebook gives you eight different pens right here, and there's customizable, you can customize other aspects of it, I can easily have my four standard pens and then have four that have fading ink or one or two with fading ink to customize according to what I need. Nice. Hey, did you know I that you can check? Yeah. It. It's great, isn't it? What's that? It's the fading ink is great. Yes. Do you know that you can change the timing yes, on the magic pen? Yes, you can. I, uh, under the magic pen, that was something Notebook 10 didn't do. Notebook 11 does give us. Under the fill effects, it does have the same kind of feature. And so I can come in at the same timing that you have for fading ink. I can also do on the magic pen. Very cool, very cool. One thing that I've told teachers on now it would be better with just the regular pen is um, if somebody the other day I said, ooh, could you could do math facts that, you know, repeat. But then someone the other day said she uses it for sight words. So that she'll put a word up there and the kids have to spell it. And then she puts another word or she calls out another word. So something like that that you don't definitely want. It's not erasable. It's not, once it's gone, it's gone. So love those ideas. Okay. Hopefully you're getting some new tips and tricks and love how Jeff is modeling and, you know, virtually, but good stuff. All right. All right. That's going to lead me to one that I know was a very high demand item. People were asking for it all the time. I had teachers ask me all the time. I put all this stuff together. Kids have been writing all over the board. And then I either have to hit undo a hundred times or close the file and don't don't hit save. And that was the reset page feature. This was a great little addition. 
definitely helps things out, expand, expands capabilities for the teachers to let the kids go to town on their notebook file, and then with a couple of simple clicks, they get everything back to the way they want it. Uh, this one I designed as a simple, a simple little example. Um, I used chemical equations, so you can automatically tell I'm definitely at the high school level. I'm doing chemical equations here. But a situation like what I've done here, I've got it set up with pull tabs. <clears throat> Under the various tabs, I've got an example one where it's telling the kids what they need to do. But I've got questions under each one. So I pull out the question. It's asking the kids to do this calculation. Well, the kids come up to the board. They're going to select, they're going to come up to the board. They're going to start writing, writing all their answers up here. And as far as I'm concerned, that is the answer to this equation because otherwise I have no clue what the answer is. They, they start writing, all the, writing down their answers. This one is also set up with a where they're going to actually build their chemical compounds. So I've added in some infinite cloner aspects to it. They're going to put everything together. Okay, the kids have done their calculations. I've got this one set up so they pull it down here. It actually reveals the answers. But I have five more questions on this page over on the side. I've got over here on the side. I don't want to have to have the teacher come through, select everything, delete, move all this stuff back. The reset page feature is going to take care of all that for me. Over in our page sorter, I've got my page selected right here, this current active page. I click on the drop down arrow. It now gives us an option to reset the page. We have the clear ink. That one actually came out with 10, I think with 10.8. But the reset page, when I click on reset page, it's going to ask me, are you sure this cannot be undone? I reset the page, everything goes back to the way, the way it was when I first saved it. It is important to know, generally, the reset page, you need to save the notebook file, close it, and reopen it, because I've had it where if I didn't close it and reopen it, it's reset a whole lot more than it was supposed to reset, including deleting things that I had inserted. But it works out really, really well resets the whole page. Heather was showing earlier, you can add the reset page to your toolbar. So if you didn't want to have to go through the drop down arrow, I could very simply modify my toolbar to add the reset page feature to it, which is hiding right there. So I'm going to add my reset page in there. So again, it, I can have, by adding it to the toolbar, I can make my life a whole lot easier. I don't have to go through this extra step of clicking the drop down. But it is definitely going to be a big time saver for teachers. They can reuse a same, the same page over and over without having to clone a page, make a notebook file that's got 15 pages just because there's 15 different questions. Uh, it, I know this has been a big question from a lot of teachers, and I know they are very happy to see this addition. I will say something, Jeff, that I've noticed, and I think it might be a little of a bug. Unfortunately, when you release software, sometimes teachers push the limits of technology, and so, which is a good thing. Um, I was always saying, well, I wonder if, if and we've noticed that um, object animations in the reset button sometimes don't play nice. So if you have like a fade in or something when you do the reset the page, what I've experienced is that it clears my whole page. So I have, ah. yeah, so I have sent that in. So you just be cognizant of that. It is a great feature for many, many other things. And this is a perfect example. But we did find, and I tried it out. And sure enough, when I reset the page, it cleared everything. So um, just be cognizant of that. And I mean, that's something that they, we've already had one um, update in the, you can the check the updaters. There, there was an update. So. Um, that's just something to note. Yes, I did see there was that one update. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't know about that one, that little bug. There, the object animation, I found several small bugs already. I just have to get mine reported. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like you said, it's new software. There's always, there's always new bugs for new software. Yeah, it does, but I think the little bugs sometimes, the new stuff, the new features outweigh some of those, the little bugs. So they definitely improved a lot of really, really neat stuff. 
All right. Very cool. Love it. Love the idea as well. That was the reset page feature. The next one I've got, this is one of my absolute favorites. I did love this capability. This was something I know teachers were asking for. They, I've had teachers ask me in the past. They wanted to be able to use a Vokey. Uh, if you're not familiar with Vokey, Vokey is a, a just an online little avatar that you can create. Vokey.com is the website. It creates these nice little avatars, and he kind of does creep you out because he follows the mouse. He'll help follow your mouse cursor around. But it's a speaking avatar. If you've got this file open on your computer right now, when you hit the play button, hello, he should speak to you and say hello. This is, a, this is one I created, actually, I think I created like two years ago when I first started playing with Vokey. But it creates this nice little, a nice little avatar. The Vokey is capable of recording up to 60 seconds worth of dialogue. You can record it through a microphone. They actually have a phone-in feature where you can actually call it in. They, they have several different options on getting the audio in there. But the limitation is 60 seconds. It is free. Great little thing. What's happened is they've created the Vokey widget. With Notebook 11, uh, Smart has allowed for the creation of what's called widgets. People program these independently. Smart approves it. Creates It creates the widget package, which is like a gallery package. You download the gallery. You install it into your computer. It adds it to your, it adds it into your gallery tab. Hey, uh, Jeff. I, Yes. Will, will you define, what's your definition? I, people have asked me, what is a widget? Um, do you, I mean, you're more geeky, sorry, than I am. <laughs> but you said it earlier, so I'm just using those words. But can you kind of give a, what your description, a description of a widget, what it is, and maybe some other, besides in Notebook 11, some maybe that they've seen widgets that are out that, that could, they can kind of correlate? Um, a widget is kind of like an, a third-party program that goes into a program. I guess I could, in a roundabout way, I might get too technical here. Um, oh. But it's a, it's just a it, it's another object. It's a, literally a program within a program is really what it comes down to. It's just an object that allows us to pull one thing in and play around with uh, uh, pull an X internal object into another program. Places you may have seen widgets, if you're familiar with uh, iGoogle, iGoogle was real popular uh, four or five years ago. It, start, it still exists, but it's kind of fading away. iGoogle was a web page built on widgets. And what it would literally have is you would put a widget that has your weather on it, another widget that has your news feeds, another one that might have uh, I don't comic strips or your favorite that might have your Facebook feed, uh, but it would be one page. You'd come to this one internet page, iGoogle.com, and there would be as many of many of these little blocks set up on the one web page that were all widgets showing you information from all the web pages that you generally visit. You're not seeing on like some Windows 7 computers or even before that, some people on their desktop, they might have a clock or they might have pictures or weather um, on their desktops. Those are widgets, right? That is a, that is very, very close to a widget. So okay. I'm going to say yes. Okay. They, they have a different terminology for it, but the overall concept of it, yes, you are correct. That's a good example. Okay. Uh, that would be a good example of a widget. Okay, okay, because people have asked me, and I've tried to explain it. It's, I knew it's kind of something that lives outside, but you're bringing it in, but I didn't know how to put it in layman's terms. So hopefully that might have helped a little bit, but now that we're, and we're going to be adding, like we have some timer widgets, so they, they're really programs that are, that are like living and breathing within your notebook file, in a sense. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so what do you have for us on this? All right, so you see this widget already here, the Vokey here. If you're interested in downloading the Vokey widget, I did provide the link on this page, and it takes you directly to the Smart Exchange uh, web page that has the Vokey widget. But what I've set, set up for you on the very next page is 
an overall example of how the widget works. Uh, it's, it does get a little geeky, but fortunately you don't have to speak geek in order to do this. Um, you create your Vokey, and I've set one up for everybody to play with and practice with. You'll create your Vokey. When, after you've created your Vokey on the website, it's going to have a button called Publish. Let me see if I can find that. I'll pull that in real quick. Um, I've got my uh, the Vokey's created. I click on Publish Your Vokey. It's going to pop up this dialog box. I can resize if I want to. All I need to do is copy all of this code. I don't have to understand what any of it means. I simply have to copy it. In your situation, what I've done is I've put all that code into this box. So we can double click on that, select it all. I can copy it. Once I have it copied, I come back to Smart Notebook. I insert this widget. I will have had to gone out, searched it. There's the Vokey widget because I've already installed mine. I already went to the website, downloaded and installed it. It pulls out, just, it pulls into the, into the notebook file just like any other gallery object. From here, I simply have to paste my, uh, paste my code into this box. Generally, the right-click feature does not usually work for that, so I've got to use my keyboard shortcut, which is Control-V, Control-Victor, and it will paste all my code. Once I've copied my, uh, pasted my code, I click on Go. It, it is now going to go out and it's going to pull up my Vokey straight off that web page. It is now a fully functional Vokey. I can hit the play and it should start talking to me. Hello. It is a very, very neat feature. Uh, I've seen teachers already using this. The teachers who jumped right on board with, Vokey, with Notebook 11, as soon as they discovered the Vokey, they were, were going crazy with it because what that allowed them to do was put instructions into the Vokey. They would speak their instructions. The kids would come up to the board, hit play, and it would tell the kids what they need to do. Hopefully your instructions don't take more than 60 seconds, but that's about the only limitation on it. But it was very, very effective. And if you were looking at classrooms using your smart board as a center, it makes it very quick and easy. Kids walk up, they hit play, they hear the instructions, they do the actions on the smart board itself. You as a teacher don't ever have to do anything with those students because they, they can be listening to your own voice through the Vokey, and you know they're going to pay attention. All right, so I do like that. It is a very neat feature. I love the Vokey, and in, in a few minutes when I get a little further down the page, I'm going to show you some really neat things I found out with the Vokey widget. Uh, I've been playing with it. I started playing with it and reverse engineering it quite a while back and trying to figure out what else could I make this thing do, and I will show that to you in a few minutes. But you can see Vokey really is not, not difficult to work with. Just copy and paste that code and, you're, and you press go. All right. Hopefully, I uh, don't see any questions popping up on that one. No, I don't think, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty yeah, it's straightforward. I mean, just the, make the Vokey and then it's pretty straightforward. So, so sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. No. No, that's okay. All right. The next thing I have deals with the internet browser. I love. And Heather talked about this early on. We have they have the capability of embedding an internet browser within the notebook file. This has been a huge lifesaver. I have teachers all the time minimize notebook, open up Internet Explorer, browse to the website, find the information you want. Now you have the capability of having your own internet browser built right in with the web page preloaded. So I can type my web page in here. It's already there, ready to go. As soon as you navigate, the page, re the page will refresh as soon as you get to it. But here's my web page. It's now I can simply come in, navigate, scroll through it, show the kids what, what they need to see, and I can keep moving on. I never have to leave Notebook. I can immediately teach it, click Next, and I'm moving back. I'm moving on. Inserting a browser 
is a very simple, uh, very simple step. Insert. I go to the insert command. Internet browser. As soon as I click on insert internet browser, it's going to pop up the browser. All I need to do is type in the web page. It gives me a couple of little tidbits of information, but I can type in the web page that I want it to go to, and I'm ready to go. It works really well, very, very, very friendly, very easy to work with. Another great thing I love about it, though, what's made this so easy to work on and definitely works to the benefit of the teacher, on this browser that I've Gave every, that I hopefully your file loaded up already. I have it going out to the Smart Exchange, and there's this picture of a chicken. I want this chicken inside of my notebook file. All I have to do is drag and drop. I click and hold on the chicken, and now I can pull it out, and it's now part of my notebook file. That quick and that simple, I did not have to do anything. It does capture any caption text that is with it, so I've got the word chicken with it. I, I want to get rid of that, so I'm going to delete the word chicken. But I didn't have to go to Smart Exchange, download the gallery picture, double click on it, install the gallery. I've got the chicken. It's already there. I, it's an absolute great time saver. I can pull pictures pretty much from anywhere on the web. You do want to bear in mind, I have to throw in that bear in mind to the copyright, the copyright of the owners. But very quickly, I can grab pictures from the internet. Maybe you're working with a map. You're doing something with social studies. I've got, I need a map. I browse to the map online. I can pull it directly in, resize it, do with it what I want to. And you've got a quick reference without having to do any extra work. I don't have to copy and paste. It's already done. And by some freak chance that I wanted to keep this chicken, and I'm going to use them more over and over, I can very quickly add them to my content, simply in dragging them to my content, and now I've got my chicken. I don't know where he's at. But there's, a, there's my chicken. So I now have that chicken in my content. The same feature that works on pictures, oh, I saw, can I pull a picture from a PDF? That is a very good question, Linda. I believe you can, depending on the PDF. Some PDFs are protected to prevent, uh, prevent that from happening. But I, have, I do know I have in the past been able to pull pictures from a PDF. Um, I think Heather's going to talk about using the, the camera later on, the screen capture tool. And if you can't pull it out directly like that from a PDF, you, you, very, you can use the screen capture and it will pull it in as well. Just to answer that question. One thing I do like about it also, not only pictures, I can do it with text. I've got all this text right here. I want this. Highlight it. Drag and drop. And now that text is part of my notebook file. And it is fully editable, so I can double click and I can start changing stuff if I wanted to. I've got full capability right there. Very quick, very simple. This pretty much takes the days of copy and paste, minimize, restore, up, down, up, down, all this time of copying and pasting, and it eliminates it very quickly for you because I don't have to leave Notebook to get the information into Notebook. All right. So that is the browser. That's the browser in a nutshell. I think it is a great little addition. I know this was another high demand thing for teachers. Uh, one thing it does, there are a lot of different little buttons on the bottom of it. I didn't really go into them. You do have the capability of move, moving that bar up to the top or the bottom with the, with the arrow. Um, there, is, there are some other capabilities in here if you're interested in playing with them. It definitely has the navigation buttons and such as well. And Oh, I know one thing I forgot to mention on the browser. If it's here, it's not showing it. Heather, did they take that off? It had the capability of removing this toolbar once you had your web page in. So the I think they. Navigate page. Yeah, I think they. I think they. Um, they took, disabled it. Yeah, I think for uh -huh. the full version. I think. 
Yeah, but it um, used to be on the drop down, the object drop down. I could come in and had a command where it would turn off this toolbar. Mm. And so the kids wouldn't be able to navigate away from the page. Interesting. Was that in the beta or was that in the real thing? Uh, I remember it in the beta. I never even stopped to look for it when, when the yeah. official version came out. Yeah, I never even saw that, but I knew I haven't seen it with the new version, so that might be something because I, I, you know, it's one of those things. If you pin the page, but you're gonna have maybe potentially have a kid that could type something in there and go out. Right. But I don't know. In I mean, there's probably no difference in them doing that and going to the website and doing something. So right, they yeah. can still click links. Yeah, so it really yeah. Doesn't stop them from navigating. Right. Okay. Okay. That's okay. All right. Um, going on with the browser, the next page I talk about, I've got I've got it loading out to YouTube. It's going to pull up a video. I'm actually going to pause it so it doesn't continue playing and start talking. But one of the things I immediately ran into, this was my very first thought when I saw the browser, was I had teachers all the time. They're like, I would love to have the YouTube video within Smart Notebook without downloading the video, converting it to an FLV, and dumping it onto a page. They wanted to be able to have this browser so they could pull straight to a YouTube video. I was like, well, that's a great thing. And when I saw the browser, I was like, that's the teacher's question answered right there. The one catch I ran into, however, was in a situation like this, I've got the video, and here's the video. I have to scroll down, scroll over. I may have to may have to resize things. I have to resize my browser to make things fit correctly. That was cause that actually caused me an obstacle because it, it's time. It's time for the teacher to start looking at it going, okay, I've got to do all this and even though I've resized it to make it fit, when I leave this page, it's going to re it's going to reload this web page. All I've got to do now, navigate away. When I come back, it's going to refresh this web page, and I'm back at the top of the page again, and I've got to scroll once again. So that was that was throwing me off. I was not really happy about that aspect. So I. That got me thinking, going, okay, is there some way I can work around this to make life easy on everybody? And that's when I started, really started experimenting with the Vokey widget. And I wanted to know what else, if that Vokey widget accepts embed code from the Vokey, will it take embed code from YouTube? YouTube has embed code just like a Vokey does. If I come down to share on a YouTube web page, it's going to pop up this initially the link, but it has the embed. When I click on embed, it's going to show me, oh, here's all my embed code. And that got me thinking, what happens if I take the embed code and put it into the Vokey widget? That's when I made the discovery, if you advance to the next page, the Vokey widget can do a whole lot more than just Vokey. And right here is that YouTube video. It's yeah. one yes. It's playing that YouTube video straight through. This happens to be the Vokey widget. I use the exact same widget. I just copied that embed code. So that definitely got me experimenting and saying, okay, what else? What else? There are hundreds of websites that provide embed code. So I started playing around a few other things that came in. If you're familiar with Labarize, Absolutely love Blabberize because you can just take any kind of picture, upload the picture, and make that picture talk. Where do you find Blabberize? If people are not familiar with Blabberize, what is Fortunately, I mean, Blabberize is Blabberize.com. What would be a teaching, I mean, why would a teacher use Blabberize in her classroom? I know Blabberize. Linda asked about it, but yes. Sorry. Ultimately, Blabberize is very similar to your Vokey idea. Okay. Um, in Vokey, you have actual computer-generated avatars. Blabberize takes a picture, whatever picture you happen to upload. I took this picture of a bear and I uploaded the picture. And it, when when you upload it, it actually allows you to come in and customize where the talking mouth. So you added that, that little down. mouth moving up and down inside of Blabberize. Correct. Blabberize will let you 
I don't know That's about awesome. that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything really quick I can pull up on that one. That's okay. I think it's probably <laughs> easy enough, or or maybe I'm sure. You, do you have any little directions or anything that you've typed? <laughs> I've seen Labrys. I just never have you really used it until you, I saw this. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I'm thinking, oh my, what awesome possibilities! You can do pictures. Of, you can do pictures of people, pictures of just about anything to make them talk. Um, I know I've got directions somewhere, but I will have to look for them. No, don't I worry. Do. Yeah, if you can just look later, you don't have to take the time now. But yeah, that would be so awesome. <laughs> and if you've not used Blabberize, Blabberize.com, it was one of those things when the first time someone introduced me to it, I was like, oh, okay, how complex is this going to be? It, it is a simple, simple task. It, it is a browse to the picture. You upload, then it puts, you click on the next button, it puts this little green bubble on the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. You adjust the bubble to fit the mouth. Then you upload the audio. I might have those two steps in reverse. You, you upload your audio or you record your audio into it. You click finish and you're, it's done. Cool. It was so incredibly simple. Nice. But the talking bear was entertaining. My seven-year-old son absolutely loves it. So he went and took the digital camera, took pictures of his stuffed animals, brought the camera back to me and said, okay, can you make my animals talk? <laughs> So I've got well, and Lisa said it would be great to use it if you had a report, um, who's and the person is that subject, and you they you know they talk, so yes. versus that straight old PowerPoint or you know whatever. That is an awesome idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, How moving fun. on. Um, moving on quickly. Another one I did. Uh, if you're familiar with Prezi, Prezi is a presentation software, Prezi.com, same thing. I just used, I took the Prezi, I embedded it directly into the, the embed code, I embedded it into the Vokey widget. So right there on the fly, I've got a Prezi presentation that I can fly through very quick. And I could go over and over different websites that I've experimented with. And so far, every website I've experimented with has worked well. So how did I do all that? Uh, the following page, I've got the Vokey widget. You can even say, see, it says type or paste your Vokey code into the field below. What I've done is I've gone in, I've typed up real quick. This one is directly for YouTube. That same YouTube video we saw earlier, down at the bottom, I set this up like we did with the Vokey. I've got the embed code from YouTube. So I can copy this, uh, copy the code come back into my Vokey box and paste it. Now here's the one one area that I have run into the catch, but it's a small catch, nothing major. I click on go just like I do before. You will see it will pull this up. The one restriction we have, the Vokey widget was designed to be a specific dimension to fit the Vokey itself. As you can see, the YouTube video is not fitting inside the Vokey widget. That's okay. That's why we have the resizing handle. I grab the resizing handle, just start pulling it, make it fit. And now my YouTube video is embedded within Smart Notebook itself. And like I said, you can do that with you can do that with just about anything. So far, everything I've found that has embed code has worked out really, really well. Because I was programming a YouTube widget and then I realized why am I doing all this extra work when I can just do it this way. So I do love that. Um, I have tried it with, if you're familiar with Animoto, I have tried it with Animoto. It's worked there. I added that little thing on there. Um, there's a couple other sites I want to try, but so far I have not been disappointed. All That's right. awesome. That takes me through the Vokey widget. What's that? 
said that's awesome. We've got um, Linda actually, Linda Rush posted on um, the Today's Meet that she has directions for um, the Blabber Eyes. And I, she has a website, so Linda's in the awesome. Dallas area. And she's a Mac user as well. Um, but she has Blabber Eyes directions as well. So she's a website, so I said, would you post? So um, that would be excellent So for everyone. That's awesome. Love. And, you know, that's, I mean, I like, I love to experiment but sometimes not at the time so I love you guys experimenting and you know this is why the software sometimes has bugs because we push the limits of it but what a great what how cool I mean I'm just I'm excited so one more thing to add to my list to learn about and love it so thanks Jeff for already sharing can't wait to see what else you have so cool 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 so I won't stop you all right that's going to lead me into Probably, if I had to vote for a favorite feature in Notebook 11, this one has definitely got my probably my top vote, the Activity Builder. If you've not played with Activity Builder, this is an absolutely incredible tool. Um, in this situation, here's an example of, uh, of a lesson designed with Activity Builder. I've got all these different images with words underneath, and to go along with it, all the, the four boxes in the corners indicating the parts of speech. Well, this is designed with the idea of, okay, it needs to be self-check capabilities. Students are going to come up to the board, start working with it. We might have them working independently, so it self-checks themselves. We don't want to have to have them drag it all to these boxes and then have us come back and say yes or no. So this was designed with the idea of the activity builder. It's a, an immediate self-check idea. So I'm going to take this first picture here, and it indicates quickly. If I drag it to the noun box, it's going to kick it back. It tells me, sorry, you're incorrect. If I drag it to adjective, uh, adjective same thing, because this one happens to be an adverb. I drag it to the adverb, it disappears, indicating you, you've got the answer correct. And so I can keep doing that over and over and over with the various pictures dragging them to the boxes, they disappear. You, uh, the student quickly learns this is the correct answer, that's an incorrect answer. It's immediate self-check, immediate uh, awareness of what's uh, of the, word, uh, the wording or whatever other objects you happen to use it for. I love this because it is, it is a very neat tool. I was concerned when I first saw it demonstrated, the very first time I saw the beta so uh, software and it was being demonstrated, I was concerned about how difficult is it to do the activity builder. Is this going to be real tricky, real hard? Is this something the teacher is going to be able to pick up on easily? I was a little concerned on there because I've, I've worked with other, other interactive whiteboard softwares that have this kind of capability, and their software was tricky to do. And therefore, the teachers don't, very few teachers actually use it because it's so difficult. Well, I've set up on the next page, I've set up an example of the activity builder for you to work with and to go along as we go through the process. What I did find was smart. They did an excellent job making it simple. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I'm on this page, I've got all my different animals set up, ready to be, ready to be classified. What I'm going to do for activity builder over on our little toolbar, we've got our activity builder puzzle piece. When I click on that, it's going to pop up an area for add-ons. Add-ons were designed with the idea of third-party programmers creating their own add-ons for a smart notebook. Right now, activity builder is the only one that's built in, but eventually down the line, we're we'll very likely to see more add-ons being published. I click on activity builder. It's going to pop up a very simple it's a simple window. What do I want to build my activity on? Right now, there's zero, zero activity objects on the page. I've got various objects on here, so in this case, I'm going to start with this very first box for amphibians. I select the box. As soon as I select it, it's giving me options. I'm going to say Edit. When I click on Edit, it pops up this box. Which ones are correct? Which ones are incorrect? It says accept the objects, reject the objects. What I do like is I can do multiple objects at one time. 
So in this case, I've got the frog and the toad. I'm going to select both of them and drag them into the correct box. And it, allow, it automatically accepts them. Now I did do something on this page on purpose as part of the example. Down at the bottom, it's got the rejected items. Now I can do the same process, select all the rejected items. It does give us a great little feature of add all remaining. So I'm going to add all remaining. You're going to see all the rest of them pop in. Now there's one catch. The very first one, of course, you can't actually read it, but you can see there is right up here. There's this red X indicating this one got added as well. It didn't add any of these objects. The reasoning behind it, these objects are locked. You can see the lock on there. A recommendation I always make for people when they're using the Activity Builder, lock your objects that you do not want as the accepted or rejected items. By locking them, they, when you click on the Add All Remaining, it automatically ignores anything that is locked. My title is locked, everything else is locked, that's why it didn't take those. You have, if you accidentally do add an object to the wrong field, I can drag them from one field to another if it needs to go from the rejected to the accepted. The object here, in this case the text, I can drag it to the trash can to get rid of it. Or there is that nice little red X on it, and as long as that's working correctly, that's not I used to be able to disable it that way. I can't do it anymore. So I'm just going to drag it to my trash can. It's going to remove that X. It's no longer part of my accept or reject. So my objects are added. Very quick, very simple. I do now have settings. Most of the time the settings that are on there have been more than what I need. <coughs> but under settings, if an object is accepted, what do I want it to do? I can have it fade away, fly out, snap to the center, spin. I've got several options on there. I also have the option to, for what happens if it's rejected, bounce back or nothing. And if you really want to get creative, you can add sounds to it. So we can maybe put applause, add a sound for applause or whatever it happens to be. So you've got your different options available to you, which are great just all depends on your activity. I've added everything I need for this object. I'm going to click on Done. When I click on Done, it's going to come back. It's going to tell me there's one object currently on the page. Just as a precaution for myself, I am actually going to lock these objects because I did not lock them on purpose. Everything else is currently locked, so I don't accidentally add those anymore. Now I'm ready just to move on. Reptile would be my next one. Even though it's a locked object, I can still build with it within the Activity Builder. So I edit the object, and I go through the same process once again. I selected my two reptiles, drag them in, add all my remaining to my rejected items. <clears throat> As you can see, I did lock these objects, so they are no longer adding. So that's definitely beneficial. And then once again, if I want to change my settings, I can change them, or otherwise I just click on Done. Very quick, simple process. I can repeat it over, repeat it as needed, just for every every single object on the screen. If you're playing, whoops, I drove too fast there. If you're playing around at the same time, you can see how easy it is for this process to work. Once I've done everything. In this case, it's set up so that my objects are directly below. If I need to, I can rearrange these to force the kids to actually have to think a little bit. I don't know why we would ever want to do that, but there we go. I rearrange my objects. The activity is already active. <coughs> Excuse me. It's active already. So if I drag my frog up to reptile, it kicks it out. I drag it up to amphibian, and I've got it set up to fade out. I absolutely love this. This is a great little self-check, immediate recognize activity. Teachers can do so much with this. It was it was definitely something I know I've been asking for for a couple of years at least. And it, it is a major, major benefit to Smart Notebook. And you see the process. It is a very simple process. It doesn't take a whole lot to do.
I did play around with Activity Builder on the very next page. I actually had fun utilizing both Vokey and Activity Builder. So I've got Vokey in here. Those of you familiar with the Aesop's fable of the lion and the mouse, this one has got a, an abbreviated version of that story. But I can come in, I can click on play, it will sit there and t uh, tell the story. And then the process here is order of events. The kids have to drag these in and decide, okay, where, do they, where does everything go? If it goes to the wrong box, it's going to kick it back. If it's in the correct box, this one is set up so it goes snap to center. So if I pull it in, if it's in the correct box, even though I was not lined up directly, it snaps into the center pretty quick. The snap to center, that was a nice little nice little capability of the Activity Builder. But again, this was built on the Activity Builder, so I can identify, you can see the marquee showing up to tell me which ones were set up as Activity Builder objects. The Activity Builder is definitely a big plus. If you haven't played with it, you're going to want to play. All right. I think that is all I had on there. Yes, it is. Okay. Heather, that's all I had on there. This was me playing around as well. I threw I throw this on here. Um, the school district I work for, we have a resource section on the iCafe, lcisd.org website. You can pull up the resources for SMART, and we have these little books built in. Little, they're a couple of what we call cheat sheets. They're step-by-step how-tos on how to do certain the certain processes. Um, right now they are most of them are still modified for 10.8. That is one of my summer jobs is to update these for 11. Yay. But you are welcome to go steal those if you want. Borrow, borrow, borrow. We don't I steal. They're out there publicly. <laughs> Yeah, but we can borrow. Good teachers borrow and 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 then just give credit. And we love you guys that create all these awesome resources. So very cool. I hope that um, this format is kind of it's a little slower paced than the cramming the whole stuff in the hour. So hopefully this format is helping you to maybe. And plus, in the summer you have a little bit more time to change to play with stuff so a little less pressure um, all right cool nice stuff very excited I love it I always learn so very very cool so that's so we've um, got our today's meet going on and and we've got some some questions so we'll we'll keep um, answering Jeff can watch the the questions and stuff and then I will um, I'll get started uh, on the other. There is another file that um, I shared. It said Jeff's file was called Jeff, and then mine is um, Heather. And we've got about 20 more minutes left, so um, these are a little not as um, probably cool, but still neat features that you have. So. Jeff, I'm going to, so you can type, I'm going to um, mute you, so let's see, okay, so we're good, um, and Jeff will watch and answer questions, so if you have any questions, you can send him questions about some of the stuff that he showed, or in this, so I just, basically, I used this file yesterday, and I know that um, Pat is, is joining us today, so it will look familiar, but one of the things that SMART did was um, they added this image um, fill feature. So in the past, when you filled an image, you when you filled it, you might have been lucky if you got the head or the eye of the head that you wanted to see. So I just wanted you to see how cool this is now and how you could potentially use it. So you notice that it's kind of hard to see, but I have a, I have a box um, around here. So you see that there's a red there's a red box. So I have my red box. So I have to have a container, an object to fill. So just for the time and stuff, I'm just going to show you the kind of the quick, um, easy thing. So basically, what I want to do is I want to select on my object 
and so I could have made a shape and I've given a practice page but we'll see so I did that just in case but and then I can go there's a couple of ways I can fill things so I can fill things with this particular way I, w I can either use my drop down and I can well actually no let me back up sorry I'm gonna go over to my properties tool for this so my properties tool is still used and my property tools are on the right I think Jeff had his on the left it's just it's personal preference I think or however whatever you're doing so when I select this notice that when I selected this remember that your your um, choices of what you can do will change. I always tell people that I call this kind of the live box. When it's live, it's waiting for some actions. It's it, there's what can you do to it? What can you change? So one of the things that you'll see when you do this is I'm under fill effects and how do I want to fill it? Well, you have no fill, solid fill, gradient pattern. And you had always had the image fill, but now you have um, another option. So if you have the option of keep the image Image the same size. If I do this, watch what happens. So I get that ear of that little koala bear. And that's what happened in the past was I got the ear or a part or an eye or something. Now if I hit scale or select scale image to fit, I get the whole little image inside of it. And it's very easy to do is, you know, you want your, your on your computer, you may have pictures of your students from a database. Somewhere the image has to be on your computer. So if I browse to my pictures, so if I'm just going to um, click on and I can go to, and I'll just go to these pictures here and I just have some sample pictures that I can use. Maybe I want to change this to my American flag or any picture that you have. You know, maybe I want to have a picture of my son in there. And that's, and see it kind of depending on the size, it's a little, you know, the the box and the resolution so I might have to change just kind of double click on it and I can maybe try to make that a little skinnier and adjust it so I just double clicked on it and use the little handles those are new well they've always had handles but they look different so that's how easy it is to 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 add that image and I gave a hint down at the bottom so pretty simple, pretty easy to do so add your image and remember to scale it so that's the first tip that I wanted to talk about. The next thing is grouping. We've talked about shaking and grouping, but one of the things that, so we've already done the shaking and grouping, but, but I've had questions about, gosh, how did you do that? So this is, you notice I have the paint bucket here. So let's go to that next page if you are following along. And let me show you something pretty cool with the new software. I can take now and I can fill irregular shapes. So for example, I gave as an activity, um, because I borrowed the idea, we were making a snowman. And the snowman had to use all the different, like they had to, ha they had to fill something. They had to add shapes. They had to put something from the gallery. So it's just coming back full circle into, so if you do some training, you know, giving, um, if you've ever um, done activities where you have to choose and there's characteristics of things, this might be an idea. So if I've made something, what one of the people did is they had a snowman and the snowman had lips. Well, in the past, you'd have to color in your lips. Not anymore. If I take my say, red pen, and I have my cute little lips here. So I've got my shape. Remember, see how it's closed up here? So now what I can do is in the past I'd have to color in my shapes here with my pen right there and I'd have to change the size and all of those different things and you know that's such a pain. So let me undo that. Now what we can do is I can go to the paint bucket, choose fill, and choose that color that I want or I could choose this little um, color chooser and drop it in and lo and behold now I have a cute little fill and now it's an object so maybe I'm doing tessellations or something you'll find that the fill is non erasable so you have to you, have to, you can't erase it the line is erase it, erasable but maybe it's it was I wanted to maybe I want to change my color of my line to black 
and now I want because I wanted it outlined. Did you know that on your computer that you could use the arrows and nudge? So if you needed to get it just exactly where you wanted it, and now I have that fancy highlight over. Even though there's two two live boxes or two boxes, shake and group. So that's that's new. The fill, so kind of nifty and neat. So you could think about ways to do that. The camera tool, so we've always had the camera tool. I just wanted to show some examples of, of ways that you might use it. So this was one thing I showed I made and thought it was kind of a cool idea. So let's see if I can get that to be, let's see. So let's, so what I did basically is, let me move that over, I'm just kind of stuck right there. Okay, so let's close that out for right now. But basically what I did is I took a camera shot of, or a part of it. So Jeff, we were talking about the PDFs. This is a way that you could do this. But notice that my, my leaf right here is movable. So all I did is take a picture and then I camouflaged it by using my nudge tools. Whoops and moving it and getting right on top of there. Then what I would do, and well, that's not really right on top of it. So let me move that over just a little bit. So see, now I lined these up right here. And now what I would do is tell the kids, hey, let's find, let's dig underneath the leaves and there's little things hiding under the leaves. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, that's cool and that's, you know, that's really low level. So what I might want to do with this is add a page and I might go here and say, you know, from here you're going to drag those insects out or those animals and I want you to categorize them on a table. So you can drag from your item and now let's talk about those. So that's, I'm going to talk about, you know, really thinking about when I'm doing the teaching and learning. It's not just about digging for stuff. What can you do? Can you describe these insects or these these different um, animals and, and do something with them. So that's really something to think about, just using the camera tool. And the camera tool, basically, if you take this the shape, you can go around a shape and get a picture. And so it, it, it there's my shape right there. And it's hard to see, so let me change the background so you can see what it's about. See, that was my shape. So that's, you know, just a way, a different way to use the camera. Here's something that people don't think about sometimes when you use the camera is using real images. If you talk about authentic learning for kids, you know, maybe you, it, it's, you, maybe you have an iPad and it has a picture and you take the picture and you add it to your things. Maybe you have just, you know, talk about authentic learning and how if I, those, if that's my hands, I'm truly going to really be pulled into the learning because it's my, it's me, it's about me. Here's a kind of fun little activity that actually a teacher made a couple of years ago at one of our content creation seminars. And this is fun, so I'm going to show you a neat little trick. So this, this I could take the picture and I can take it and then I can go and, and see and let me go back over here and let let me, um, let me see I'm doing two different things so what you can press I'm not going to press it here well I can but you won't be able to hear it when you on your computer these actually will make noises so I'm on mine so these so what can happen is the kids can do their phone number but here's the cool thing is if I come over to my gallery there's something called a text splitter so if I go to splitter right here. All right, so here's Splitter. So I'm going to go to this little Splitter right here. It's in my gallery. Here's my, my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, because I want those, those numbers to be infinitely cloned. So I'm going to drag that back over here. Do you see what happened? It, there's my numbers. I want to split those into letters. So think about sentences. I could split sentences. So now, get rid of that text splitter now, and now I have one, two, three, and I've got all of these numbers. I'm going to take these and let's grab the six. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm not going to make this really fancy just for time. And I'm going to highlight across all of them, marquee select, 
and I'm going to, let's see, infinitely clone now if I have, the, well, my phone number is 555, five, you know, whatever it is. And that's just a way for a really early learner to practice doing their phone numbers. And then when you press on the green button, it does the old sound. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So you can try that out. Just as a fun idea that I borrowed from a teacher. All right. So if you have any questions about the cameras, then let us know. But um, but that's that's just an idea um, if you're following along the to do the camera tool. I did give you a um, the next page has an idea for worksheets. So we're always thinking about some of you may be C scope districts. Um, oh, I don't know where my handouts went. So let me click. So I'm going to go out here to, let's see, let me see if it's here, uh, let me see, I think it's, sorry, I'm going to my desktop, I think it's right here, all right, here it is in my file, there was, I gave you a beginner, um, ooh, that's interesting, so I don't have the PDF reader on my computer, so what I was going to do was show the example of, making, don't you just love when little things sometimes don't always work? So this is my lovely desktop, so we'll see if I can, I'm not really sure why that's not opening up the PDF, but it didn't, oh now it is. So basically, hopefully I'm going to open this up. I could write on it with Smart Ink, but it's really just thinking hard about it. Oh, there it goes. So what I can do with my camera tool is if I have that tool, it's going to float on top of my my item. So for some reason, mine's kind of hanging out right here. So, you know, I want to take this, this PDF. So I know Linda asked the question earlier. I want to take this PDF and make it electronic. So what I can do is, you know, I'm going to capture this flower to a, to a notebook page, and I'll infinitely clone it. So, um, hmm. So let's try that again. Let's... Oh, there it went. All right. So there's my flower right there. So what I can do is I can build this lesson, and instead of just a plain old couple of questions, I'm going to add this, and it does a nice snap shot but there's my there it is right there so I don't I have this but what I could do with this and I'll show you is let me change the background of this this is one of those things that I was going to show that people don't really they don't realize so let me change my background so you can see what's going to happen so this is fine but I don't want this dotted or this uh, blank box around my flower that happens when you do the area capture so I'm going to set the picture and click OK and now what I've done is and I think on the Mac it's a different you have to tell it something different in there so I'll find that out I can change this to infinitely clone and now I I can do this this is takes that boring worksheet and this is where it talk I talk about kids you know that interactivity and that teaching and learning opportunity Whoops. So just an idea to, you know, really think about what you're doing with your kids. What what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Um, I think for time, I'm, uh, the tables, I think I'm going to hold those. I was going to show a couple of things inside of tables. It's nothing really hard except that, um, and I do have an example of picture transparency and sounds. Sounds, um, Basically, on tables, what they've done now is now each table, each cell, you can you don't have to um, undo it. You can change, and there's your little table cell. Tables are much better because you can change properties easier and stuff with tables. So that's pretty much all I was going to say about tables. And then sounds. Basically, what Smart has done is when you go to the sound icon. You can record your own sound. So we'll we'll probably explore this in Ju in July, how to record. But I'm thinking if I had flashcards, if I had um, if I had this picture up here, and I tell my kids to come to the computer and tell me 
what do you think is happening in there? They can automatically record their own sounds. So pretty neat, pretty nifty about, you know, a way to do stuff with not a lot of steps. So I haven't been checking the, today's meet, but I'm sure Jeff is going back and forth. I want you to, the biggest takeaway with all the stuff that Jeff and I shared today um, is when you're creating interactive learning and student engagement, think about what you're doing. So we want to move from knowledge base up the balloons ladder. So when I have conversations with administrators, sometimes I say, is this dice interactive? And the dice is interactive because, you know, it can move around. But that's not, that's not interactive learning. I need to do something with it. So as you're teaching, as you're learning, as you're planning for next year, think about your lessons. For example, this. This protractor alone is an, is an interactive device, but what I do with the classroom. So for ownership of learning, I could tell my student to come up, choose, he makes an angle and presses on it. And then they have to tell me, is it acute, obtuse, and right? Maybe you have a clicker system and they, they all text in their answer before that student. So I don't have a bunch of angles on the page where they're just labeling it. It's very self-directed, ownership of the learning. Same thing with this. Show me multiple ways of making a dollar thirty-five. Not just one way. So how do I include everybody in my in my class? We all have coins and I say, okay, everybody make a dollar thirty-five. And then I want you to come to the board and by cloning my pages we'll have mul multiple opportunities multiple opportunities. So show me your way. Show me your way. So just be thinking about that. Don't forget about the Smart Exchange. This is a great time to find lessons that correlate to your standards. We do have correlated lessons to STAR now. Don't forget about the Ed Compass blog that you can subscribe to so you can look at. We have a new issue that's out that's a really excellent. Here's some information about our Pinterest page and this cool Miss Meacham snapshot lessons. So that's a link. Somebody was asking, I think, about the notebook app. It's coming. I'm actually presenting on it next week in Austin. So I, it's not out yet. This is her smart notebook um, lessons right here. She's talking about how she can use. They're all built in smart notebook, but we have other people that have interactive whiteboards that want to use our stuff. But really nice page, really nice. So that's, I've added some stuff like that. Don't forget, we are down to the wire. We've spent an awesome two hours with you. I hope that this um, format, I hope that you have picked up some cool tips and tricks um, that, um, so somebody's asking about the smart app. It is coming. I don't know. I'm going to get a, a, a short, a early release of it next week. I'll have some stuff that I might share next time on it. But you have to keep, it'll be, for, uh, you can purchase it through the um, iTunes and the App Store. Um, so I'm hoping that this was great. You learned lots of stuff. You know, we'll do it again. We'll probably say just a little bit the same stuff, different stuff. I never say the same things in our afternoon session. So we'll we'll take both of them um, and post both of them. Keep if you have any questions, as always, please let us know how we can help you. Um, and and definitely um, keep you know de definitely whoopsie. Let us know how we can show you. Whoops, that's not what you want to see. This is the the thing. So this is what you want to see. Next session is July 12th. We'll do a little more with sounds. If there's anything that we showed today that you need a review of, um, keep let us know. Um, I did have a question. Some people have asked about the Voki app. I think that um, I think that there might be a, um, something that the filter because I've had another district. And um, I will get this information. Linda, if you can send me your Blabberize stuff or a link, I would love it. I know everyone here would love it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, hope that you have a wonderful summer, June, and um, we'll see you possibly in July. Thanks again, Jeff, and I'll see you this afternoon.
oops, and you're on mute. So, Jeff, any parting things you want to say to everyone? Let me unmute you. Jeff? There we are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank, thank you to everyone for joining us. And it's been a fun morning. Yeah. Okay. I will see you this afternoon. Awesome. Keep, if you ever have any questions, email me and we will, we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.